Paul writes, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And it's already what that means is all sorts of men, all kinds of men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. I believe verse 3 pertains back to verse 1. What is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior? That we pray for all sorts of men. Don't let prejudice keep you from praying for men's souls and for the glory of God in their salvation. Uh, it may not always be his good pleasure that we lead quiet and peaceable lives. <laughs> uh, there may be some disruption, but one thing's for sure, in all of it, we're to pray to that end, pray for kings, but then we say God's will be done, however he's pleased uh, to do it. Because it says here in verse 8, who will have all men to be saved. And again, leave the proper interpretation as all sorts of men to be saved, whether it's rich or poor, uh, whatever the, the race, he has a people that he's purposed to save from all uh, tribes and nations and tongues, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Verse 20, all go unto one place. He was speaking of the process of death. It's not saying that men don't have souls as animals, but go into one place, that is the grave. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again. It's just funeral homes have made a big industry of trying to make death look different. You've got people in cosmetics trying to make the the body look right. You got funeral homes that are selling you the most expensive, hundred year guarantee won't leak type vaults and all of that. But it's still dust. That's how the Lord made us from the dust, our Father, and that's to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. That's the one thing that distinguishes man from beast. There are a lot of people that would love to think that we all just die as beasts and that's it. But here, clearly in verse 21, scriptures make a difference. Spirit of man goes upward. It doesn't mean everybody that dies goes to heaven. It just means that that spirit is taken before the judge. But the spirit of the beast goes downward to the earth. People today would be aghast if you said to them that what is represented as Christianity today is the same thing as Islam. Same thing. And they're like, oh, you can't say that. Yes, I can, because what represents so-called Christianity today is a works religion. When they tell sinners to be saved, this is what you must do. You're preaching up a works religion. This is what you have to bring to God in order for him to save you. It's a conditionalism, but it's a works religion. It's no different than Islam or any other named religion in the world. We're either in Christ been taught of him and by his grace, we've been declared righteous by his finished work, or we are of these described here in verse 36, that sins against him, that hate him, and so doing, they love death. I'll tell you, next time you run into somebody that professes to be a Christian, ask them, do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? And they're like, what do you mean? Yeah, obviously. Let me have you describe him, who he is then. Just tell me, who is this Christ that you love? And then be quiet and listen. Sometimes they think we got to do all the talking. But uh, we need to do the asking to get them to declare. And I'll tell you, it doesn't take long before 
they feel like they're under the spotlight. In fact, you'll see some even starting to sweat because you're questioning just to find out. You say you know Christ. You say you love Christ. This is a matter of life and death. Who is he? That I might know him. That's what the blind man said to Christ. And he said, do you believe? And when the Lord said, I am, he bowed and worshiped. 